Brown Ballroom. I'm here with Ian Thornley. Big Red, they're back here in Buffalo. Welcome to Buffalo, the city of good neighbors. Great to be back. You know, Buffalo has a really deep love for Canadian bands, and especially Big Red. Yeah, it's, uh, it's always been kind of good to us. Like, um, even before we got signed or anything, uh, we've had shows in and around Buffalo that have been great, and people have kind of started following us. Um, and I'm talking way, way back. I just heard that you played at the Cooter Lounge around the corner. Yeah. See, yeah. there you go. I got, yeah, I, way I, back I, a lot of my, I don't remember the, the, the details oh, because sure. it was so long ago. Um, but I, yeah, there was a, even a festival once and Judd Nelson was there. See, these are the things that I remember. Very good. I remember Judd Nelson from uh, Breakfast Club. He was there. <laughs> uh, and yeah, it's just, it's always been great because, I mean, you get a lot of snowbirds coming down, but it's also, I think, because um, maybe some of the people here are doing some of the Canadian radio. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's great. You know, I think it's it's wonderful. It feels that's like how I found you. I, I wouldn't have never heard of Big Rec if it wasn't for KK and the okay. Canadian radio stations. Yeah. Definitely. Um, I wanted to ask now. In 2012, you came to Lockport, mm. and mm. when you had come, you mentioned that you hadn't been to the states in a long oh, time. Yeah. I wanted to know what were you your feelings coming over to that show, and what were your feelings that night? I was I was really surprised. Um, <laughs> because it because it had been a, a while since we'd done an American show, uh, and certainly since even in the Thornley stuff, it, 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 it had been a long time. So I was kind of like, oh, this is going to be it's going to be weird, and we're going to get out and there's going to be crickets and maybe 50, <laughs> 50 people, Canadians who cross the border with big black T-shirts, you know. Uh, but no, we we walked on stage. It was like I, I think it was like three thousand people. It was insane. Um, and, and, it, and, and it, it was a roaring crowd. It was like people that just wanted to have a good time. I don't know if they all knew who we were or, or oh, whatever. Yeah. We but yeah, did. No, it was fantastic. Yeah, we, and we had a great night. Uh, and it was just like, well, we should be doing more of this. You know, we just sort of looked around at each other and it was like, why are we doing more of this? This is great. Um, yeah, and then, and then uh, maybe a year after that, we did a, a couple of short runs, or maybe one short run through the U.S. Um, well, I think it was a couple of them. One of like three or four shows, and one of four or five or eight shows. Uh, and it was the same thing. It was, I mean, obviously we weren't lucky enough to have that, those huge crowds, but the, even if it was like a hundred people, mm -hmm. there were such rapid fans that it really made it feel like something special and unique. It was very different than a sea of people. Um, you know, there for the experience as much as anything else. These people were here to experience the music, and I think that, you know that really puts you on your game and, and uh, pulls something different out of you. So it was, you know, I enjoy all of them. Those are great shows too. Yeah, I had reviewed Albatross on my radio show, and I think it's my most listened to show. No way. Yeah, yeah, and it's a fantastic album. I love the title track. I really love Wolves. I love yeah. the full sound of the whole thing. Yeah. 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 The sore guitar is now. Oh yeah. I know that's kind of a, a nice sweet spot for you. Those are my favorites, yeah. Yeah, so and far. they're they're just beautiful. Just yeah. you can just talk through them. Yeah, well, I I have the, the Sores and, and my Meridians, the ones that uh, my first guitar tech and I kind of designed on a hotel room napkin. Wow. Um, he's coming tonight. Oh great. Um, he's gay. He's driving up from Boston. Uh, but yeah, no, it's the the Sores are just. Uh, um, it's hard to describe. I can't. I can't really put it into words. But it's 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 just all the tricks and all the things that you could possibly think of are already worked into it somehow. So it just it they play themselves. Um, so you're not really in the way. If you know what I mean. Mm. Like it just sort of. It's hard to it's hard to move from one to the other because sometimes I like to grab something and I like to wrestle it a little bit, but I like to feel like I'm in command of it. You know mm -hmm. what I mean. Uh, but these are just not that. It's like if you could do that with a sword, it's kind of like, what are you doing? <laughs> we don't. We're not fighting here. <laughs> it just, it just, it, it just kind of gets out of the way, so that whatever you're doing, what musically, whatever ideas come, they just come out, as opposed to get hitched up with like, oh, how do I? It just comes out. Um, yeah, and they're beautiful, and, and, and he's a beautiful guy. It's a beautiful company. They're great. Uh, I couldn't say enough great stuff about, about sewer and the amplifiers too that's what I'm using mm -hmm. as well um, all over the record and ghosts and, and live too 
Yeah, yeah it's, it's just, it's, it's great. It's, a, it's been a, a great relationship for me to have. Wonderful. How do you maintain a work-family balance? Because I know, you know your wife is quite the cook and she's a celebrity on her own. So with both of you being in the spotlight, and how do you manage that with the kids and school? And um, I don't know. <laughs> it's hard. We, we, you know, I think uh, we, said we, find, we find a rhythm, essentially, uh, that, you know, that we've been working on for however many years, and just, just you know, and, and each year, you know, my daughter gets older and, and thing, everything changes so rapidly now. It's a, I hear she's got a cameo. On the oh, yeah, no, she sings, and, you know, she's, she's a, a pretty brilliant little kid, and it, I, yeah, so it, it, it's really hard for me to be away mm -hmm. and, and miss stuff. And certainly when she was really, really little, it was, it was really difficult. Um, but, you know, with like FaceTime and Skype and all that stuff, you can, you can figure things out. Um, but it is, it, is a weird, it is a weird balance, but you just sort of find a rhythm to it and you figure out how to do it. You, know, you find a way. I, do, I, do, I always notice when I come off the road, um, it's kind of like, you know, in the airport, they have those flat sort of conveyor belt things that, that help you speed up. Yes. Uh -huh. And if you walk really fast on them, and then all of a sudden you're on normal ground, you kind of do one of those. Yeah. When I come off the road and, I, and I'm home, I, I sort of feel a few days of that. Mm -hmm. You know, it was like, almost like jet lag. Mm -hmm. uh, which kind of sucks. But, it, you know, and then before you know it, it's like the daily routine of, of being a Mr. Mom just kicks in. And, Making lunches and doing dishes and all that stuff. <laughs> it's, it's, you know, I, I love them. You know, I miss that. When I'm not doing it. I'm <laughs> bitching about it. When I am doing it. <laughs> kind of like this. You know what I mean? yeah. Like just being on sleeping on a bus or not sleeping. You don't really sleep. That's enough. Um, I miss it when I'm not doing it. I complain about it. When I'm doing it. <laughs> do you have some kind of? How do you? How do you maintain and sustain? Your mental and physical self. Do you like have a daily regimen? Do you um, work out or meditate or? Yeah, well, you know, I, w I try to work out whenever I can. And I was actually considering bringing a bike with me because I've got recently gotten back into cycling. Um, and I was thinking about bringing a bike with, and it, it just you know, I was like, well, there's too many guitars, and it's probably going to be snowing. Turns out, like, <laughs> like, this fall has just been so. You know, I'm like, uh, but no, I, I yeah, I try to exercise whenever I can and just get it. Get a good sweat going, you know what I mean? It's a, and, you, and certainly when you're on stage, you. Um, but yeah, I, I, meditating is, a, I, you know, I, I wish I had that sort of quality that I would, I wish I'd be able to do that. But I think our little warm up routine, like our, our two hours before the show when everything everything starts to happen, and it, it really, it, it's, just, it's just about centering yourself and, and getting focused um, and it's just it's, it's something that's grown uh, sort of organically throughout the years you know I used to just sort of like cough scream a couple high notes and hit the stage uh -huh. um, and then you know if you uh, three or four shows in you find yourself really pushing and the sort of the tone of your voice changes and um, but it, you know and I've sort of ripped uh, warm up exercises and things from friends of mine who are wonderful singers. Mm -hmm. uh, and, I, and all that stuff, yeah, that, that's sort of my meditation, you know, and certainly a lot of uh, the guitar stuff. And, um, yeah, it's just sort of, that's how you center yourself before a show, and I think that helps with, with maintenance, if mm -hmm. you will. Like, just, just you know, leaning on it night after night after night. Uh, it can it can be taxing in your in your vocal cords, and certainly like sometimes you wake up with a claw. You know, the other day I woke up with a claw, and everyone was laughing at me. Shoot up! Let's just stretch them out. And I would assume it's because I'm sleeping like this with a pillow or something. But yeah, all that stuff it, it really is. That would be more than anything. My sort of meditation would be a couple hours before a show, doing a, doing a proper warm up and going through all the all the sort of familiar sort of touchstones of things I'm okay with and just sort of see where we're at here and see where we're at there and see, you know, um, and then, you know, just try to cram in a workout on a day off or something like that. Um, because it, if you're not working out regularly, it's, it'll, you'll be sore. Right. <laughs>
Hey everybody, it's Anthony from Big Rack. You're listening to the Hot Jam with Suzanne Show.